Hi, this is Mrs. Sloan, and this is part three of chapter six. Just a little rewind here. Part one of chapter six was all about cells and the flow of energy. We talked about the laws of thermodynamics, and we talked about entropy. We also talked about metabolic reactions and energy transformation. So we talked about free energy, endergonic and exergonic reactions, and ATP. Part two in chapter six was all about metabolic pathways and enzymes. We talked about enzyme substrate complex and energy of activation and factors that affect enzyme activity, including enzyme inhibition. Okay, so part three of chapter six, we're gonna talk about oxidation and reduction reactions. And this is going to be a critical component, a thread you're gonna see in the next two chapters as we discuss photosynthesis, and cellular respiration, okay? So here we go. Let me make myself a little bit smaller and go to this little analogy I have for you. Let me get in presentation mode. Ah, I'm right in the middle. Okay, and I need a pointer. All right, so I've never run in a four by four relay, relay team, but from what I understand, the passing of the baton is uh, real significant. But I want you to use this um, to kind of envision electrons getting passed. Electrons in your mind, I want you to think energy. Whoever has the electrons has the energy. But I also need you to remember that electrons have what type of charge? Are they positively charged or negative? They're negatively charged, okay? So when we think about redox reactions, when you think about electrons getting passed, you're passing energy, but you're also passing a negative charge. So that's why when you talk about something being reduced, that it gains electrons, but it becomes reduced in charge because what it's gaining is a negative charge. The opposite of reduced, which happens simultaneously as something gets reduced, something else is getting oxidized. And when you think about um, oxidation, I want you to be thinking about oxygen. And when you get oxidized, um, some oxygen, remember it's electronegative and it has a strong pull on electrons. So when you get oxidized, that means you got hooked up with something that would take electrons away from you. When you get reduced, you're actually getting electrons. So those happen simultaneously and are opposite. So in this analogy, this individual is gaining the electrons, he's getting reduced, while this individual is getting oxidized, he's giving up the electrons. So on your notes, you have oxidation reduction, redox reactions, electrons are transferred, that's what you wanna put in the blank. Electrons are transferred one, from one reactant to another. So oxidation, here's a little picture for you. Let me get rid of this, here we go, sorry. So. If you look in this diagram, um, this reduced comp this this compound right here is the reducing agent. He's got the electrons. A has the electrons. He's passing those electrons to B. So now B has the electrons, like passing the baton, right? Now A is oxidized and B is reduced. So oxidation is a loss of electrons. And one way you can lose electrons is just, you know, here, I had the electron, now I don't have the electron. Another way is to think about whether you're hooking up with hydrogen and oxygen. Now, here, let me just make myself larger here for a minute. All right, so I want you to think about the friends that you have, all right? Hopefully you have friends, okay? Some of your friends, like, they are the bestest of friends to have. They are always there for you. Um, if you're hungry, they'll feed you. If you need a ride, they'll give you a ride. They're always a form of encouragement. They are helpful friends, helpful friends. Think of H, helpful friends. Hydrogen is that kind of friend. If you hook up with hydrogen and you need some electrons, hydrogen willingly, willingly donates those electrons, okay? Now think about some of your other friends. They are takers. You could be talking about yourself and all of a sudden they make the story about themselves. Um, they always are taking your food, always bumming a ride, always wanting to copy your homework. Okay, whatever friend that is, I want you to put a big O on their forehead. Not, you know, not literally, obviously. And they are like oxygen because oxygen is a taker, hydrogen is helpful and a giver. All right. So when you talk about redox reactions, if you get hooked up with hydrogen, you're going to get reduced because hydrogen will donate those electrons willingly. So one way to get reduced is to gain electrons. Another way is to gain hydrogen because hydrogen is your good friend, helpful, giving you electrons 
or another way is to break up with oxygen because oxygen when you're with them is a taker. So if you get rid of oxygen, that is yet a third way to get reduced. So if you look at your notes underneath um, um, oxidation, now let's do the opposite of all that. How could you get oxidized, right? You could hook up with oxygen because he's going to oxidize you or break up with hydrogen because when hydrogen is with you, they always donate their electrons or you could just straight up lose electrons. So I wrote those already in your notes, oxidation, loss of electrons, loss of hydrogen or gain of oxygen. And then reduction is gain of electrons, gain of hydrogen or loss of oxygen. Sometimes people remember it using the phrase oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. That's oil rig. All right, so let me make myself smaller again. Hopefully you have better friends than oxygen. I hope you do, I hope you do. Um, so when you look at this right here, here is this compound NAD, which you're gonna get introduced to in um, cellular respiration. And NAD, you can see electrons coming in. Okay, so then it's represented instead of just being NAD, now it's NADH, so it gained a hydrogen and when you gain a hydrogen you're going to be gaining electrons and also you can see plus H plus meaning he lost those electrons um, so there was some source of electrons and probably that source was glucose and we'll be talking about that later so what happened to NAD specifically in this hopefully you would pick number two he got reduced all right and I gave you some other examples on there as well all right, so now knowing that, let's revisit the idea of these two organelles, a mitochondria and chloroplast. And we know the products of photosynthesis right here in the chloroplast, those are the reactants for cellular respiration in the mitochondria and vice versa. So if you look at this right here, here is the equation for photosynthesis, right? Um, CO2, water, energy from the sun is going to form glucose and oxygen. And, and aerobic respiration, right? These products here are the reactants. So we can see um, glucose, oxygen, and you have CO2, water, and then you have energy on the product side, right? Because you have ATP that is formed. Now, I want to show you how these work together. If you look, if we read from left to right, this is photosynthesis. If we read from right to left, this is cellular respiration. Notice where energy is. Is energy on the reactant side or is it on the product side? Is this an intergonic reaction overall or an exergonic reaction overall? This CO2 in photosynthesis is going to become this glucose over here. When CO2 becomes glucose, so here it's just carbon and oxygen, and here we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So CO2 gained hydrogen. So the CO2 must have been what? Oxidized or reduced? The CO2, hopefully you said, got reduced into glucose, right? Here, this water is going to become this oxygen. What happened there? It was hydrogen and oxygen. Now it's just oxygen. So it has lost hydrogens. So this water got oxidized. Where do you think these hydrogens went? Hmm? I don't know. Maybe here. Are these those hydrogens? Yes, they are. Okay, and you can see the reverse of this if we go in the other direction. If we were in class, we'd be drawing this out together. Let me just cut to the chase here. All right, I know, kind of messy. But here, read this, just take a breath. Okay, read this from left to right. Here, just looking at the top half, okay? Here's the sun's energy in order to do this. The CO2 gets reduced into glucose and the water gets oxidized into straight up oxygen. This happens in chloroplast. Your energy transfer molecule that you're gonna be using for photosynthesis is NADP, okay? Now, if we look on the opposite side here, if we're going from right to left, if we're doing cellular respiration, this oxygen now is getting reduced into water and the glucose is getting oxidized into CO2 and your end product is you're gonna take the energy that's in this glucose and it's going to become transferred into ATP. Whereas if we work from left to right, we had to use the sun's energy to change the CO2 ultimately into glucose. And here the energy transfer molecule you're gonna use is NAD. So in both these scenarios, 
in both these scenarios, these hydrogens here on top get temporarily given to NADP and they get reduced. And then oxidized as the N reduced NADP transfers those electrons into um, the, the CO2 to form the sugar. It's the mule. NADP is the mule that takes the electrons from the water and gives them to CO2 to form sugar. And in this case, NAD is the mule. He takes the electrons from glucose and hangs onto them temporarily and then gives them um, to oxygen to form water. Okay, so that's like a big picture. We're gonna learn the details of those reactions in the next two chapters. But what I want you to see in your notes, go to your notes, the top half here on chloroplast and photosynthesis, you capture solar energy and you convert it into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is right here, glucose. Initially, ATP and reduced NADP is formed. So we're gonna use the sun's energy to make some ATP, and we need that ATP in order to fix CO2 into glucose. These molecules are used to reduce carbon dioxide into glucose. The electron transfer molecule is NADP. Okay, and you can think of like P for plants or P for photosynthesis. It actually stands for something else, but that should help you. Okay, mitochondria and cellular respiration. Glucose gets oxidized into carbon dioxide. Glucose gets oxidized into carbon dioxide. ATP molecules, you get a bunch of ATP out of that process. And elect the electron transfer molecule, your mule, is NAD. Um, and then... How the ATP process, notice you're going to make some ATP when you do photosynthesis. You also make a whole bunch of ATP when you do cellular respiration. And I want to talk to you about how that occurs. So remember when we talked about high energy, you know, going from a high energy to low energy, we talked about entropy and going to greater and greater disorder and the process of fighting entropy. Well, we're gonna be using in both cellular respiration and photosynthesis, an electron transport chain. And I want you to think of this electron transport chain as like a hot potato. Like if you're playing a game of hot potato, I don't think anybody plays hot potato anymore, but think of it like this. You have a potato you put in the oven for whatever an hour, it is a hot potato. I pull it out, ah, I pass it to you, you pass it to somebody else, you pass it to somebody else. As that hot potato gets passed along through a whole series of people, it's gonna lose energy each time to us, right? And using that analogy, you can see here you have high energy electrons and it's going bouncing down these stairs, and na 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 And as this high energy electron is getting passed down these stairs, just like we passed our hot potato, we lose a little bit of energy each time. Now we know that from the second law of thermodynamics, right? Each transfer of energy, you lose a little bit of energy, but you're able to capture some of that energy to create a hydrogen ion gradient where hydrogens are concentrated on one side, more on one side of a membrane than another. And we will use that hydrogen ion gradient to generate ATP. Now, I alluded to that in the first video that we did on chapter six, on the very first, we talked about entropy, right? And we talked about that you have less entropy when you're more organized, when you have hydrogen ions on one side of that membrane. We're gonna harvest that in order to make ATP, and that happens in both cellular respiration and in um, photosynthesis. So let me show you another picture, all right? So here you can see, okay, so here you can see energy from electron transfers. That's the na 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 when you're passing electrons from a higher, from a higher energy and you're and going to lower energy and you're passing the electrons along. This occurs along a membrane. Remember, you'd have to have receptors, right? Member proteins can act as receptors. And in the process, some of those receptors have the ability to take hydrogen and take it from one side to the other side of a membrane. You are going against the concentration gradient. So remember when we talked about this, when we talked about active versus, versus passive transport, you're gonna need energy to concentrate hydrogen ions onto one side of a membrane, okay? So they're like, here, I'm going to the other side. Here, I'm going to the other side. They're passing those hydrogen ions along. Remember, it's an ion, so you're gonna have to use a protein because 
ions cannot cross through a phospholipid bilayer, right? You can't cross through a phospholipid bilayer if you're large or charged. And hydrogen ions are definitely charged. We're con concentrating them to one side of a membrane. Okay, so that's going to require some energy. So once you've got them all stacked up on one side of the membrane, what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to come across because what you've created here is a chemiosmotic gradient. You have a difference on this side of concentration. There's more hydrogen ions on that top, the blue side, than the orange side. Okay, so you have a difference in concentration. You have a difference in charge because there's more positive charges on this side of the membrane than that side. And you also have a difference in pH, right? You have a lower pH on this blue side than you do the orange side. All of these differences create a lot of potential and they want to come back through. And when they come back through, this is like a turnstile when people are trying to get into Disneyland when it first opens, everybody wants back through. It turns a little turnstile and this protein right here, look what its name is, ATP synthase complex. Well, ATP, you're synthesizing it with an ACE, ACE means enzyme. So this complex right here, when the hydrogen ions come whipping through this thing, this gives you just enough energy to phosphorylate ADP into ATP, to phosphorylate ADP into ATP so that you can form ATP as a result. So when you look at this, it says an electron transport chain and ATP production. It's a coupled reaction. Okay, it's a coupled reaction because as the hydrogens move through, you're going to capture some of that energy to form ATP. So high energy electrons are delivered to the system. This is in your group shared notes. High energy electrons are delivered to the system and low energy electrons leave. So that's, let me back that up. Okay, let me back that up. High energy electrons are delivered to the system and low energy electrons leave. Okay, this is a series of redox reactions. So for instance, when this, when this stair step gains the electrons, he gets reduced. When he gives up the electrons, he gets oxidized. Then the next step gets reduced and then oxidized. Who are these steps? These are proteins. These are tr energy transfer molecules. Um, I'm going to show you more details about what each of those molecules are, but this is along a membrane, either in mitochondria or chloroplasts. Okay, so these series of redox reactions, every time electrons transfer to a new carrier, energy is released to pump hydrogen. So every time it transfers here, ultimately energy is released to pump hydrogens. Um, to one side of a membrane, to pump hydrogen ions to one side of a membrane. An electrochemical gradient is established. A difference in concentration, because we have more hydrogen ions on this side than that side. A difference in charge, because we have more positive charges on this side than the other side. And a difference in pH, because this is lower pH compared to the other one. So an electrochemical gradient is established, a difference in concentration, charge, and pH. And then carrier proteins allow hydrogen ions, here's your carrier protein, allow hydrogen ions to flow down their concentration gradient. Now they're going from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, okay? And this energy is used to synthesize ATP. And this energy is used to synthesize ATP. All right. I I know that that is um I know that that is a lot um to take in, okay? But the the key part of that what we've talked about is redox reactions, right? Redox one item gets reduced, whoever gains the electrons, the other item got oxidized, whoever gave up those electrons, right? So we talked about to get reduced, you can either gain electrons directly, you can hook up with hydrogen or break up with oxygen. So that was the first part. The second part of our discussion today is looking at how those two energy organelles, right? Mitochondria and chloroplasts, how the reactions that are taking place how they kind of complement each other, right? The reactants of one are the products of the other, et cetera, okay? And then um, the third thing we did is we looked at how you establish a chemiosmotic gradient 
a chemios, excuse me, a chemiosmotic gradient across a membrane, right? And you use the energy from redox reactions on that membrane, from that series of redox reactions, to concentrate hydrogen ions to one side or the other of a membrane. Once you have them concentrated, you have a difference in charge and concentration and pH, and you can harvest that to ultimately make ATP, all right? And we'll hit those in the next two chapters, all right? That's it.